Welcome back, it's Richard. Today I'm gonna show you something that will significantly increase your productivity while working with code. If you're just getting started with software development, in addition to learning how to code, you might need to learn Git. It's a version control system allowing multiple developers to collaborate on different features while working simultaneously. If you're working in a team or have checked some projects on GitHub, you might have used Git. While being extremely popular, many engineers are still confused by its command line interface. For example, git add to stage and git reset head to unstage. It's no surprise users waste time, get frustrated, distract the rest of their team, or worse, they just lose the results of their hard work. While there are many third-party apps attempting to solve this issue, and even the Xcode has an embedded git client, I find most of them to be either too complicated to be used every day or too simplistic, so I always have to resort to command line interface, up until I found GitHub. I think it's simply the best Mac Git client you could find. And the best part of it, it's completely free. Now, whenever I'm working with Xcode, I always have GitHub open side by side so I can view and compare my changes. GitHub is really well designed and looks like a native Mac app, because it is one. If you like simple yet powerful applications such as Keynote or Pages, you'll like GitHub too. And of course, it supports dark mode. I'll put the download link in the description below so you could try it out yourself. And now I'm gonna show you my GitHub workflow. Right after opening, you have their menu to select the repository you're going to be working with. If you'd like to clone a remote one, just click File, Clone. GitHub consists of three screens. The first one is your map or tree screen, where you see all of the repository history at a glance. Navigating the tree is easy. Just use your arrow keys. If you'd like to zoom in on a specific commit, just press the spacebar and you'll see the detailed data for the commit, including its hash, date, author, as well as the list of changes. Press the spacebar again and you'll get back to the map view. Note that you have all the important information at the bottom, which branch you're on and whether it's in sync with the remote branch. These two buttons are to push and pull your changes respectively. So we have figured out the first screen. Let's commit some changes. I'll open the Xcode and edit a few files. Now let's get back to GitHub and we already see all of the changes we've made. I can select not only individual files but the specific lines to commit. Once I'm happy with my selection, I can commit my changes. And I'm ready to make another commit. But wait, what if I made a typo in a previous commit? It's pretty easy to fix. We go back to the map view, right click on the commit and click edit message. Of course, you can do this without even touching your mouse or trackpad. GitHub supports hotkeys and they're shown here. Type a new commit message and press save. No need to even touch the command line. And the last thing I'd like to show you is stash. When you're working on something and would like to temporarily revert your changes, just go to the third tab and click on the plus sign. After you press save stash, all of the changes will be stored and your project will be clean so that you can try something else. Once you'd like to restore your stash back, just go to the third tab again, select the stash you like and press apply. What I really like about GitHub is how fast it handles even big repositories. For example, I'm able to scroll through the Swift Foundation repository without any hiccups or glitches. GitHub accurately displays all the rich commit history that this repository has. Keep in mind that I show you just the very basics of GitHub operations, but those are the 90% I use every day. I suggest you at least giving it a try, as it has been my Git client of choice for the last five years, and I've been really happy with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. If you'd like me to make content on some other topic or specific tutorial, just let me know in the comment section below. And see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.